I wanted to start with your mother, who I imagine was a huge inspiration to you. Can you tell us about some of the work that she did in Bangladesh? Yes. Well, my mom was a huge influence in my life. I was the youngest of four, so everybody was like, always telling me to be quiet and always ignoring me. I was really loud. I had like three gorgeous sisters and I like to like be in the sun and swim. So I was really dark and you know, that's so scandalous. But my mom, I, she just took me with her everywhere. And whatever I wanted to do, if I, I wanted to be like a supermodel at one point, then I wanted to go to Bollywood, then I wanted to go to Hollywood, then I wanted to be a psychiatrist. <laughs> but she always supported. She was always like, that's the best idea ever. Uh, but my mom is... She's a really big women's rights activist in Bangladesh, and she's a former member of parliament. She actually started the first Bengali feminist magazine, Anunna. Oh, and then she's like a huge businesswoman. She's like the CEO of everything my father owns because my dad wanted to, you know, be full-time in, into politics. So she's just a really, really badass woman. And I write about her in my, in my forthcoming book. Uh, actually, in the first chapter, as, as the first feminist I ever knew. So, so when I was in high school, middle school... She would drag me to these women's rights symposiums, you know, when I was like a kid. And I wanted to obviously hang out with my friends after school and talk about boys. And I was like, this is hell. Like, my, my mom is trying to ruin my life. <laughs> and then when I was 16, she started noticing that I was like, that I had a talent and an interest in writing. You know, she, she got me this internship at this newspaper in Bangladesh, which had a weekend magazine. Mm -hmm. uh, that started publishing my work. But I had to go like two or three times a week after school. So again, I'm like, my life is being ruined by this woman. But, she, you know, because of her, I started getting published so young before I even graduated. And I, I can't imagine living or surviving in any lifetime, I think, without my mom. I think even in the next lifetime, we'll be friends or I just can't imagine. I, I couldn't exist. My spirit couldn't exist. She's just one of my favorite people. She's awesome. Anybody who meets her thinks she's really cool. And she will give it to you straight. No BS from my mom. Oh, my God. <laughs> I'm picturing you getting dragged around to these symposiums as a kid and hearing about your mom giving a speech to parliament. I know she gave like a big speech about issues happening with sex workers. So I'm wondering, like at that time as a kid, did you understand the work she was doing, the gravity of the issues that she was dealing with? Uh, yes, yes and no, because I, I, we were very aware of the status of women and girls, obviously. And Bangladesh now has changed so much. But growing up in the 80s, I mean, the poverty was really everywhere. And we hadn't really become that development star that we are now, you know, slashing our maternal mortality rates by 40%, much better than even America's doing. You know, we're, we're so close to achieving the key sustainable UN development goals. We have so many, we've, you know, outpaced even India and Pakistan in so many things public toiletry, toilets, education, girls' education, all these things. So I was aware, but I was also in a really privileged bubble. Like, really privileged, you know. Uh, my grandfather was one of the founding fathers of, of Bangladesh. And my dad was in politics, and my mom got into politics. And so it was a privileged, very public bubble. So I didn't, but then I very quickly did especially when she, that issue of the sex workers that she took to parliament, you know, it was really a large issue of violence against women where the police were raiding, raping, beating, mutilating these prostitutes, brought in, trafficked into the city because they're running, they're operating out of the slums. But in Bangladesh, prostitution is legal if you have a permit. But obviously, most of these um, brothels don't. Anyhow, they were doing a lot of this stuff. So when she brought that issue to Parliament, I, I, you know, I was there for that speech. But I realized very quickly that in a country where women were overwhelmingly powerless, you know, my mom was very powerful. But then when my childhood nanny got very sick and, and was dying, I, you know, I quickly realized, you know, my mom wasn't that powerful. <laughs> so yes, yes and no, yes and no. But um, I, I know that it was always something very bold to do.